What's up everybody, NFX here with another tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to talk about using your pitch bend wheel uh, or pitch wheel on your MIDI controller while you're playing to make um, your playing more interesting. The pitch bend wheel, what it does is it bends a note by a certain amount, either up or down. In other words, if I had this note and I bend it up or down, and uh, while you're playing, you can uh, you can kind of throw in the pitch bend to get to notes using that bended sound. And to me, it gives it a more funky and um, interesting sound to the overall melody. It's called a pitch wheel because normally the wheel it looks kind of like a wheel that's embedded into your keyboard controller, but it might also look like a joystick type of device. Um, every MIDI controller is going to look a little bit different. There's another uh, controller on your keyboard usually called a mod wheel or modulation wheel. We're not talking about that one. We're talking about the pitch bend wheel. What, what makes it different than the mod wheel is when you move it up or down, it snaps back into the middle position, whereas the mod wheel kind of stays wherever you set it. Now, I did do a tutorial on doing pitch bends, uh, in the lean back song and in that one I didn't talk about playing it so much as I talked about how to program a pitch bend and in this tutorial I'm going to talk about how to play it more specifically when to play it so you know what notes you need to pitch bend or you can pitch bend and have them sound pretty good I've loaded up a boo bass and you can see that in the channel settings here there's a pitch knob and I'm going to move my pitch bend up, and you'll see that this knob moves to the right. I'm going to move it down, and you can see that the knob moves to the left. And if I play a note and do and move the wheel, you can hear the difference in it. Now, the amount of bend is determined by this number that's next to the pitch uh, knob in the channel settings. In this case, it's set to two, and that two indicates two semitones. Now, if you haven't watched my tutorial on notes and tones, go watch it, and you'll learn what a semitone is. In a nutshell, it's basically two notes when you're talking about your standard uh, keyboard, and that includes the black notes. So if I was on a C and I go two semitones, that's two notes. So I'm going to count the black key. I'm going to go so from C, C sharp, that's one semitone, to D, that's two semitones. So my pitch bend wheel, if I push it up, will change that C to a D. And if I go down, it'll change it to a B flat which is two semitones in the other direction. Now you can set this in FL Studio to another value. For example, I could set this to 12, which will take it 12 semitones, which is an octave. So it would go from to Okay. And by the way, when you let go of the pitch bend wheel, it snaps back into position and it also bends back down to the original note and you can control the speed of that by either letting it go or holding on to it and releasing it back slowly so it's all up to you how to play it what sounds good most of the time when people use it they're just flicking it up and then letting it snap back down so uh, so that's how you how you set the pitch wheel in, uh, in FL Studio generators. Other plugins uh, may have a different place to set that. Uh, F FL Studio does have a way of, of uh, interacting with that and we'll see that in a second. But let's just let's just uh, let's just move on and what I'm going to do is load up an FM8 and what I want to do is bring the channel settings window for the FM8 kind of into view here.
notes. And the reason why I'm going to load FM8 is because it has a bigger keyboard that I wanted to be able to um, use to demo this. So here's the sound. And actually, let me take off some of the effects. There we go. Um, just so it's a little bit easier to hear the, the pitch effect on there. Now, when I try to pitch up this one, it's going a whole octave, even though I have it set in the channel settings to two. And the reason is this particular plugin is using its own built-in pitch. So you must learn your plugins and how they function in order to get the most out of them. So here I'm going to click on the pitch here. That's going to bring up the settings for my pitch. And right here you can see PB up or pitch bend up is going 12 and pitch bend down is going negative 12. So I'm going to go ahead and set these to both to two. One to a negative. First one is the regular two and the second one it will be a negative two. And now I'll be more in the in the uh, what's considered the most common pitch bend pitch bend range. Okay. Whoops. So now that I've I've done I've taken care of that, let's bring that back up for a second. And uh, here's here's um, what we're going to do. We're going to examine a scale. In this case, it's like a C minor blues scale. I'm not sure the exact name and number of this, um, but I'm going to show you what the notes are. The notes are uh, C is the root, then D sharp, then F, then F sharp, then G, and then a sharp and then it goes back to C okay so assuming those are all the notes that we're going to use in this in this particular demo that's our scale now we have to look at which of those notes can be bent up or down to land on other notes in that scale for example the D sharp if I bend it up two semitones, it lands on the F, which is in the scale. However, if I tried to bend that one down, it would land on the C sharp, which is not in the scale, and it would not sound good. So once I figure out, okay, let's see, I can go from my, starting on my C, I can go to D sharp, and I can bend that up, okay? The next note in my scale is F. F can be bent down to arrive at the D sharp, can be bent up to arrive at the G, both of which are in my scale. So I can actually bend this note up and down. Then we have F sharp, which if I go two semitones in either direction, we end up on the E or the G sharp, which neither one are in my uh, scale, so I can't really bend that that note. Next, we have the G, which if I bend it down two semitones, lands on the F, which is in the scale. So that one I can bend down, but if I bend it up, it, it ends up on the A, and that's not in the scale, so I can't bend that one. And going on into the, the scale, we have the A sharp, which if I bend it down, lands on G sharp, not in the scale, so we can't bend that one down. Um, but if I bend it up, it ends up on the C, okay? And there's the, uh, by the way, there's the A sharp. Uh, it ends up on the C. Now the C, obviously we can bend it back down. It'll end up on the A sharp, but we can't bend it up because it'll end up on the D, which is not in the scale. So once we've I kind of identified which ones are up Upable, I'll call it upable or bend upable, and which ones are bend downable. All we need to do is throw in the pitch bend on those notes whenever we feel like it. Now, obviously, it's not just going to sound good automatically. 
you're going to have to kind of develop a timing for, for throwing these in. But let's take a simple melody, or it's not really even a melody. Let's just take a simple phrase, and, uh, and we'll look at it with and without a pitch band and listen to the difference. All right, so we can play a simple part like uh, we'll do C, D sharp, F, G, and then back to the D sharp. So it's there's no pitch bends. Now, when we do add pitch bends, our timing's going to be a little bit different. So we might play an extra note here or there just to make the timing kind of the same. But with with a pitch bend, uh, we'll pitch bend it on the um, on the uh, F, and we'll go up on the pitch bend. So you can see we kind of, sounds a little bit different. So that's without, that's with. So hopefully your ear is listening and, and, and hearing that difference. And in my opinion, the, the part with the bend sounds better. It sounds more, I don't know, organic or something. It just sounds cooler to me. And uh, and that's why you would use the pitch bend. Now, remember, you can use it going up or down as long as you use it on the right keys. So that time I went down instead of up when I hit the F, because the F we can go up or down. So once you've kind of trained your your fingers to be on a note with the right hand, and hit that pitch bend with the left, you could take kind of an ordinary walk up and down the scale and jazz it up. And um, that's all there is to it. It does take some practice, but um, hopefully... There's no mystery to it anymore. So all you got to do is practice it, let your fingers learn how to coordinate with each other, and there you go. There you have it. And uh, hopefully Scott Storch won't have anything on you once you learn how to do it. And that's it for this tutorial. You know, Please visit warbeats.com if you haven't already. Come by, check us out, see what we got. We have a lot more uh, things to offer you guys. Um, Drum kits, project files, etc. Uh, good forums, good community. Uh, you get beat feedback. Um, we got it. You know, you name it, we got it. Except for wares, we don't do wares. Uh, but otherwise, other than that, c come through and check us out. Uh, in the meantime, this is NFX saying I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial.